Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Survival Let's Play. So I mentioned this in the last video, uh, what I want to do today is a quick world tour. So I just want to go through all of the projects that I've done so far, talk about them, talk about my future plans and stuff like that. But you've just got to bear in mind when you're watching this, even though I'm 25 episodes in, I might not have made as much progress as some other people would in that time. But that's just because I don't always have loads of time to record each week. So if you watch my world tour compared to other people's world tours, they might get a lot more progress done than I do. But I'm just going to go through all the stuff that I've done so far. So I think how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start off over at the base. So this is like the main area where I am all the time. And then when I go off to all of my other projects around the world, I'm going to try to show you like where they are compared to the base. Because sometimes when you watch a survival let's play on YouTube, it's kind of hard to know where everything is. So I'm just going to like use a base as a reference and then show you all the different things in other directions and show you like how to get there from my base. But luckily a lot of my projects are actually quite close together on this world. I don't really want to explore it too much until the 1.17 update comes out because that's when the depth of the world changes and then the height changes as well. So I don't really want to load too many chunks up because otherwise I won't get the new updated features in 1.18. But anyway, on to the world tour. I always like to watch these on YouTube just because I don't always get to watch people's Let's Play series all the way through. So if they ever do a world tour, it's just a nice way to catch up on some of the projects you might have missed. So I'm just going to start off over here at the base. Uh, so far, I've only got this first floor in place. But I do want to get five of these overall, so it's going to go all the way down to bedrock. So I've just got this first one. And you can see that I've got four rooms on each side, or one room on all four of the sides. So I'll start off with the first room that I built. Uh, this is probably the most important room in any base. So this is my storage room. And a lot of you probably think this is quite big and there's a lot of chests. But I think this is just about the perfect amount of storage. Most of these chests have a lot of items in, but they're not overflowing. I think it's like the perfect amount of storage. If you go into some chests like the stone, you can see I use shulker boxes to store items. So if I've got so many of a certain item, I start storing them in shulker boxes. So I've got all of these stone. I think it's like the same with andesite and stuff as well. So these are just full of bulk items. I just start storing them in shulker boxes just to save a little bit of space. And you'll notice around this build that I always try to hide as much lighting as I can. So I do this with all of my builds. But I just never found a way to hide the light in here. It looks a little bit dark without it. I'm not sure how it looks on YouTube. But here it just looks a little bit dark and I'm always just scared that a creeper is going to spawn here and then blow up some of the chests. So at the moment I think this is the only place that I've got torches. I am going to try to remove them but I don't really know how. Uh, I was thinking maybe adding a little bit of carpet here but I don't want to mix up this floor. I really like how it looks. So I don't really know how to fix it but I'm sure I can find something eventually. And I don't usually keep shulker boxes here but this is just for a project I'm doing in the next episode. So I'm just going to keep this in the inventory for now. And you can see that I've got three other rooms in here. So the first one I built was the checklist room back here. So I'll show this one first. So this is just where I'm keeping all of the stacks of each item. So I'm sure a lot of you know it's always in the uh, title and stuff. My aim for this series is to collect one stack of every single item that you can get in survival Minecraft. And this is where I store all of those items. So you can see once I've completed a chest, like this one right here. So this is all of the items that go into this chest. I turn the lamps on at the side, just to let me know that I've completed that one. And you might wonder why the stone swords and stuff are only stacked up to one. And that's just because these items don't stack. So a full stack of these items is one, in my opinion. So that's how I'm doing this series. So anything that doesn't stack, I only have to collect one of. And then there's stuff like banners over here that stack up to 16. So I've only got to collect 16 of these. And then every other item pretty much stacks up to 64. So you can see I've got 64 of all of these items in the wood chest. And then the other wood chest as well. So the next room I built in this storage room is the utility room just to the side. So this is just for some of the like useful workstations. I've got the enchantment table that I'll probably never ever use, but it's just there. I think every base just needs an enchantment table. I've got some lapis behind here. And then I've got this barrel, so if I put some items in this barrel, it gets sucked down and taken over to the smelter room. Uh, I'll go over and show that in a second. 
And then over on this wall, I've just got some of the bulk items that I collect a lot of. It's like all of the different variants of stone and then some dirt and gravel and stuff. So I just get so many of these items, I store them in shulker boxes. And when they're full, I take them out, put them into the storage room out here. So this is for all of the grass blocks. And then I've got loads of uh, gravel as well up here. So I just put the full shulker boxes in here. And then I get another shulker box out and place it on the wall. So that's just to save some space. I'm not always putting these shulker boxes around here. I've just got a space for them over in the wall instead. And then the final part of this storage room is the bedroom over on the right hand side. So this is one of my favourite interiors that I've done. I still think it needs a little bit of work. I really like this side. I'm just not too sure about this side. I think I can add some more stuff up there maybe. I've got a little clock that I added. I don't know if I ever showed that on camera. But that's just to help me see when it's night time. So I can actually go to sleep right now because it is night time. And then I've got these things over at the side of the bed which are really useful. So if I ever need rockets I just come here and it gives me some rockets. And if I ever need food I just stand on this one and then get some food. So it's just really useful when I'm going back to the base and I need to stock up on a few rockets. I just stand on there for a few seconds and then I can get some. And then over on this side I've got the axolotls. So these are named Patrick, Spongebob and then Squidward. I do want to build their houses in there at some point, uh, but I'm going to have to extend this whole thing and then it's going to take a while to do. Especially when you're messing around with water, that's always hard. But I'm going to try to do that as soon as possible. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I've got going on around here. I'm actually really happy with how this whole project in here has turned out so far. Uh, there's a few little changes I'll probably make over time. But overall, it's probably one of my favourite projects that I've worked on. And the next build that I did in this base was the smelting system over here. So I remember every time I come in here, I've not actually finished the ceiling yet. I tried coming up with a few designs on a creative world, I just couldn't find anything that I liked. But I really need to do this at some point as well. So it's quite simple how this works. I put the items in this barrel. It gets shot upwards and then picked up by the minecart hopper up there. This spreads them across all the furnaces. And then all the smelted items go into this barrel at the end. So I've been using this a little bit to get loads of this smooth stone. I'm going to need this in the next episode. So I've got three shulker boxes so far. And then I've got two more shulker boxes that I still need to smelt up. And this thing isn't the most efficient smelting system ever. To smelt up an entire shulker box like this, it would probably take about 45 minutes. So I know people that can build them that do that in about 30 seconds, but... I'm not really too bothered about the efficiency for this one because I don't really use it too often anyway. And then through here I've got the kelp farm. But this thing actually stopped working for some reason. I think it just got broke in the 1.17 update. I've not really used it for a while anyway. So I think I might have to like tear this down and then build a new one at some point. But it just completely stopped working. And onto the last room that I've got in the base at the moment. This is the nether portal room. So you can see all the blocks and stuff seeping out. Uh, if I go in, you can see that I've got the blackstone and then the red nether brick as the theme. I really like how this room turned out as well. You can see that I got the uh, wither skeletons in here. Surprisingly, this didn't actually take long at all to get these in. Uh, they're both named, so none of them will despawn. And then there's a black stained glass that you can't really see. And that's just what's keeping them in place. So I've got one over on this side as well. There's still a little bit of work to do in here because I want to have a potion brewing system down here. Probably not automated, but I don't really know yet. Then over on the other side in Neverwalk Farm. So those are two more projects that I need to do before this room is completely finished. So those are the three rooms that I've got in the base at the moment. But there will be 20 rooms overall by the time I finish with this base. So there's going to be one more there. And then another four floors beneath this with four on each floor. So there'll be 20 rooms overall. And what I'm trying to do here is keep the most important rooms up at the top. So like the rooms I'm going to use the most are right at the top of the base. And then right down at the bottom is going to be the rooms that I don't really go into very often. So that's the plan for the entire base. Uh, I don't really know what rooms I'm going to build yet. I've got an idea for like five or six of them. But there's a few more that I just have to like make up as I go along. So this circle is right in the centre of the entire island. Or I tried to put it right in the centre of the entire island, as you can see. So this is just like the main part of the base where I'm going to have all of my storage and rooms and stuff. But I actually want the base to expand all over the island. So the plan eventually is to fill this thing with an entire village. 
So there's going to be a lot of different houses, a lighthouse and loads of other stuff like a big... I'm going to keep this pond here and then build a few things around it and inside it and stuff. So I've got a lot of good plans, I think it's going to look really nice by the end. But it's just going to take me quite a while to get all the different buildings done. So I think I'll just show you the first building that I've got. So this is up at the top of the island. And I built this in the last episode so I won't talk about this too much. Because a lot of you have probably already seen this. So this is just a little farmhouse. Uh, you'll see that I've got the leaves on this side but I've not got any on this side. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is take all of these leaves down. And then try again placing them and just do a better job this time. I think I left them a little bit bulky in some places. And then I'm also going to place them on this side as well. So that is the plans for this. And that's why there's leaves on one side but not on the other. Then I'll quickly just go into the house and show you the interior. Mostly because I'm just happy with how this one turned out. So that's the downstairs. And I've got this upstairs. And then a little bedroom in here. So this was like the first time I've really tried building an aesthetic build on this world. A lot of my other projects are just big farms and stuff like that. So I just tried going out of my comfort zone a little bit to do this house. And I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. It's one of my favourite projects so far. Uh, if I just go around the back you can see the docks area as well. Uh, it's just a little docks. And I do want to have a custom boat here. I think that's going to look really nice. And while I'm here I'll actually mention that like the island is like the main part of the base. So I'm going to have loads of village houses and stuff. But I do want to expand onto other islands as well. So I'm thinking on this one I could build maybe a city. And then there's another island just out of view over there. I'll show you that in a minute, but I want to build maybe a city over there as well. And then I'll have loads of boats in the ocean. So it's like the entire world will be inhabited. So in terms of the base, that's pretty much everything I've got at the moment. I don't think I've made as much progress as I should have done. But I spent so much time like terraforming around the place. Like this thing at the start was just hills everywhere and trees all over the place. If I go over here, you can actually see on this map. So this is what the island looked like when I joined the world pretty much. This was after a few hours on the world. You can see I've got the little starter house up there. A few little farms, I think that's the enchantment table. A few more farms over here. But most of the island is just trees and hills everywhere. It took me a long time to get all of the trees removed and then flatten out the island. So that's where a lot of my time went around here. But now I've done all of this, I can actually focus on building. And I might as well show you all of the other maps that I've got as well. So this is right at the start before I made any progress. This is once I started the base. So you can see that I've got the circle in the middle of the island. I've got a few trees around the outside that I was getting some wood from. Apart from that, there's really not much going on. So there's still a lot of work to do flattening out all of that. I needed to change it all to grass as well. Uh, I think I might have had the storage room in place at this point. And you can see at the top of the island, I've still got the starter base and stuff. Uh, I think that's the iron farm as well. And then the third one is the most up to date. Uh, I did this in the last episode before I started cleaning up the island and before I built this thing up here. So you can see I've still got the iron farm in place to start a house, a few farms over here. And there's a big pond over on this side, which would just be over there. I filled all of that in as well. So this is the most up to date one before I started cleaning up the island in the last episode. So the plan for these maps is just to make an updated one every time I've made a decent amount of progress around the base. And then eventually I want to build a room down, I don't really know where, probably right down near the bottom. It's going to be a bit of a museum and it'll just have all of these maps on the wall showing my progress throughout the series. So from right at the start when I did nothing around the island to right at the end when the base is pretty much complete. So that's the plan, I'm just going to be doing these every time I make a decent amount of progress around here. There's actually one more thing I quickly want to show around the base area before I move on. And this is the coral fan farm right at the bottom. I don't really use this very often at all, but it's just a little farm that I built to get some coral fans. You can see the tube coral and stuff. It's quite a useful one to have if you need a lot of those items. But I just don't really find any use for them so I don't use this thing too often. But it is something that I built so I just thought I'd quickly show this. Okay so now you've seen everything that's around the island. I can start showing you things that are around the world. So we'll start off going this way. So this is to the north part of the map. 
if I just go over the little farmhouse that I've got here, it's just over here. I think I did this in episode one, or I started this in episode one. This is my little mining area. I didn't actually finish all of the uh, walls on the way down. But you go down here and it's to the little mining area that I built. So like I said, I started this in episode one, but I didn't finish it for quite a few episodes. The design is pretty basic. I didn't really want to spend too much time on this because I knew I wouldn't really be using it too often. But I did an episode, I don't really remember when it was, probably like episode 5 or 6. I strip mined for 12 hours. So all of these little um, strip mines you can see. I went down each one of these for 1 hour. And then I came back, I put all my stuff in a chest. And then I started another timer for 1 hour and then did another one. So that's how I recorded that episode. And then I ended up getting a load of diamonds and resources that pretty much set me up for the entire series. And I've just got a little storage room out here. There's not really too much going on just to store some of the items that I've got. And there's actually some diamonds up here. I completely forgot those were there. So I might as well take this stuff back up to the base. So yeah, this was one of the first projects that I worked on. And you'll probably notice throughout this world tour, there is quite a few of my projects that just aren't finished. Like this one is very close to finished. But for some reason I just didn't do the rest of the walls. So this is another project I'm probably going to have to come back to and finish at some point. So if I come out of this mining area and then just go behind it. You can see I've got the village area over here. So I just fly a little bit further past. You can see the villager breeder. And then I've got this rail that brings all the villagers down here. And this is where I've been trading with them. So I've got quite a few set up here. You can see the trades on the top. I'm breaking free, silk touch, fawns, mending, fortune free. So I pretty much just got all of the best ones. And then I've been stocking up on a few of them just in case I ever need them. I don't really use these villages too much anymore. Just because I stocked up on all these books and then I stocked up on loads of tools with the best enchantments. So the only reason I come over here to use these is for name tags really. I also buy some glass off them now and again. But it's mostly just for the name tags. And you'll notice that the prices actually went back up. So I got all of these villagers down to one emerald per book. And I didn't use them for like three or four months. And then the prices just went straight back up. So you can see it's up to 22 here. Uh, 15 here. So all of these were down to one. But for some reason they've all gone straight back up. And over on the other side I've got a few more. So this is just for all the tools and the armour and stuff. And again these prices went up as well. Then over on this side, I've got some stonemasons, I think. Yeah, so these sell the quartz. I sometimes buy, like, the bricks, but mostly just the quartz over here. So I've got four of these. But anyway, back over towards the base. So I just need to fly back in this direction towards the house. And you can see that the strip mine is right there. So I'll go back to the centre of the base, and then we can fly off to a different location. Okay, so this time I'm going to come out of the base. So that is the north. So this time we're going to go like southeast in this direction and you'll come over to this little land that I mentioned earlier. So it's really not far away. Eventually I do want to build a city or something around here. I think this will be another fun project to work on. Uh, this is my sister's house. She just like builds random stuff around here. This is the gold farm which is the next thing I'll quickly talk about. So I don't want to spend too much time on this but this is where I get all of my XP. I'll leave a link down in the description to this just because so many people ask me how I get loads of XP. You can see if I come down here, I never really spent too long on this storage room just because I don't think this thing's going to stay here forever and I kind of thought it would have been broken by now. But it still works somehow. So I get a lot of gold from this. I think I've got like 6 or 7 double chests of gold blocks at this point. And then you can see 1291 XP as well. So it's a simple design, it took a few hours to build right at the start of the world and I still use it to this day. So I will leave a link in the description like I said, but if you want to build it, there's a couple of changes that you need to make. So you can see here that I've got some rails going around, so it's just a rail going in a circle. And then I've got a minecart and a minecart chest. So if you ever want to stay AFK at this place, you need to do this and then you need to sit in the minecart just like this. So when you do it, it will take you around in a circle and then you can get all of the XP. If you don't do this, it can get really laggy and some of the mobs can actually lag out of the trident killers. So that's just one change that you need to make if you do want to build this. 
And the other thing that I did over here just to be safe is I set a regeneration beacon up. So this is just in case that like any of the mobs escape and start attacking me. I have a regen beacon. So it saves my life and I've never actually died on this world yet. On the other world I stayed AFK at this farm that I had and I died quite a few times. So these two changes just make it a lot easier to stay AFK without dying. But anyway we can keep going here. So my base is over there, my sister's house is here. And then I can go past the gold farm. So I'm still going in a southeast direction. I just fly over the ocean. I think there's like a warm ocean over here somewhere or a tropical one. And then we get to a desert on the left hand side. And just right now at some point my farming district should go into render distance. So it's just down here somewhere. I do actually need to set up some nether portals and stuff at some point so I can get here a lot easier. But this is the farming district. So I've not got too many farms here at the moment. But eventually I do want to completely fill this thing with different farms. I'll just quickly go through the ones I do have. So over here there's a nano farm. I'm sure most people have seen these before. You get like some seeds and then you turn it on. You just keep planting the seeds and then it gives you loads of wheat. You do need to fill the dispensers with bone meal first though. And of course you can use potatoes or carrots or whatever as well. So that's quite a useful farm to have. Over here is a little rabbit farm. I really don't use this too often. Uh, the only reason I built this is because I needed loads of rabbit to check off the checklist. Like the raw rabbit, the cooked rabbit and then the rabbit's feet and stuff. So that's the only reason that I built this thing. I don't think I've used it since I uh, completed the checklist or added all of those items to the checklist. But the way this works is simple. There's some carrots around the back. I get some carrots, come up here, breed all of them up. The baby rabbits drop through into this. And then once they're grown up, they can't get out. I can just kill the rabbits. And then I get some drops down below. So it's very simple, but that's how that works. And next to this, I've got the tree farm. And for some reason on TikTok, a lot of people like complain about how this isn't a farm. And it's just a collection system. But to me, it helps me farm wood a lot faster. It's not automated or anything like that. But I can get a lot of wood very fast using this thing. So the way it works is I get some saplings through one of these shulker boxes here. So I get like four saplings for the spruce. I'll also get some bone meal from over here as well. So I just go to the middle, I plant the spruce saplings, I grow the tree, so then I can just fly up to the top and you can see that I've got the haste effect. So I set up a haste beacon right there. And now if I just get rid of the top of this, I can actually go down this very fast. So it pretty much insta mines all of the wood. So I can get over a stack of wood in usually about 10 or 15 seconds. And this is the wood that I build with the most. I always seem to use spruce wood. It's my favourite one. So that took less than 15 seconds. And I got a stack and 22 spruce logs. And then there's probably some more that are going to go into the chest as well. So yeah, there's another six there. So almost a stack and a half in no time at all. And I know that you can build like fully automated tree farms and stuff. That are probably much better than this. But I actually really like this one. Uh, it's very cheap to do obviously. And every time I've ever tried to build a automated wood farm, it just seems to break and doesn't work. Uh, I don't really know the problems with them, but they always just seem to be so buggy. Uh, you can't really have any issues with this farm here. Okay, so onto the next farm, we have the sugarcane one here. It's not the most efficient one ever, but I don't actually use a lot of sugarcane, so I didn't really need efficiency on this one. The way it works is all the sugarcane is here. I think there's like 32 overall. And once one of them grows up to the third block tall, it will activate the observer and then it will harvest all of the sugarcane. Not all of the way along, but it will harvest like most of the sugarcane. So it only needs one of them to grow, then it will harvest most of them. Uh, I think I've got like six stacks in here or something. There's not really too much, but like I said, I don't use a lot of sugarcane or paper, so I didn't really need efficiency with this farm. And the next farm right next to this is the slime farm. I'm not sure if this was the first farm that I built, but it was definitely either the first or the second. Uh, I built this very early on. It's a double slime chunk. It's quite a simple design, so you can see that I've got the two slime chunks down here. So this is one on this side, and then I've got one on the other side. The slimes will spawn. They will see these snow golems in the wall, start jumping towards them, take damage and die. And then I've got some minecart hoppers going underneath here just to pick up all of the items. And I've actually got two entrances to this place. 
So the first one is on the side here. I just fly through the slimes in my mouth or whatever it is. And then I've got a bed in here. Uh, this is just because I always need to sleep when I'm in this area. So I just put a bed in here. And I've got plenty of storage. So this is for the slime balls. And I think I've got the slime blocks on the other side. I don't really need that much slime on this world. I really don't use it very often for the occasional like sticky piston and stuff. But that's about it. So I don't know why I built such a big slime farm when I really just don't need the slime. But if I ever do need it, I've got quite a lot back at the base. And then I think I've got a little bit more up here as well. So I've got plenty of slime blocks if I ever need them. And this is the other entrance I was talking about. So I've just got a little slime and I can jump through its mouth to go inside. And I've got the way down here and then the way up on the other side. The next project is the sheep farm. Uh, this is probably the laggiest project on my world at the moment. Like if you're realising that my frames drop around here, uh, this is why. So I've got 64 sheep. I've got one in each of these little hut things or pens. Uh, the way this farm works is the grass around the outside will spread to the middle. And then once the middle block is grass, the sheep will eat it. The uh, observer facing into that block will like pick up a signal. Then it will harvest it because there's some shears inside the dispensers there. So it's a very simple design. Loads of people use like similar things to this. Ever since the update came out where you could use a dispenser to harvest the wool from sheep, I think like everyone just switched to this design. It's so easy to build and you get loads of wool and you don't really have to do anything, you just have to stay AFK. So this is the entrance, it's just a big sheep head. I go inside and then I've got all the wool storage. So there's way more storage than I'm ever going to need here. But it's just really simple to find out which colour is where. So if I need like white wool, clearly it's right down at the end where the white is. So I go to the white chest. If I need black wool, it's right here. So it's just really simple to see where the colours are. Uh, if I ever need the wool, I just come down here and know exactly where it is and I can go and get it. And the final farm in this area is right at the bottom. Uh, this is the axolotl farm. So this is the most recent one that I've done. It's still not finished. I think it's the only farm in this area that's not finished at the moment. But I've got all the axolotls in place. Uh, what I do is get some tropical fish. I think I've got some at the end over here actually. So I get some tropical fish. Jump into one of these holes. And I just breed them both up. And they produce a baby. Uh, the whole point of building this farm was to try and get a blue axolotl. But they're like extremely rare so it's going to be quite a while before I can actually get one of those. And the plan eventually is I've got like the axolotl face over here. Or my version of it anyway. Eventually if I do get a blue one, I want to make a room through here just for the blue axolotls. So I want to have like a special area for that. But it's going to take a long time before I can actually get a blue one. I think the odds are like 1200 or something like that. So on average I would have to breed these axolotls up 1200 times before I can actually get a blue one. So yeah, that might be like a project for the future. It's probably going to take a long time to get those. So that's all of the farms in the farming district, but I've actually got a few farms around the outside as well. So you can see over there my raid farm, but I'll get onto that in a minute. Just over this side, I've got the phantom membrane farm. So of course you can only use this on a night time when you've got phantoms. But the idea is to stand right in the centre of this trap door. All the phantoms will spawn on the magma blocks. Then they will come to try and attack me, but there is a cat like right below. You can see the cat there. So they like sense a cat and then they get scared so they fly straight upwards and then they get trapped in here. And then I've just got this button so I can press this, it will weaken all of them. Then I can just get one hit kills on them all. So this is actually a very useful farm. Like phantom memories are kind of hard to get. But if you get a farm like this you can get easily over a stack every night time. So I don't use it too often because I don't really need that many phantom membranes. But it's a very useful farm to have just to get them. The next project I want to show is the map art area. So you can see the farming district right here. And then just below this I've got this little map art thing. So this is a 128 by 128 flat area. Uh, it took me a long time to flatten all this out but I finally got it done. And the idea for this place is to build these little 8 by 8 custom map art things. So you can see I've got a creeper, uh, an enderman, this is somebody's skin, like I uh, do TikTok videos and some people comment 
what they want me to build. A few people said, can you build my skin? So I did. So this is one of my followers skins and then another one of my followers skins. Somebody suggested a black and white checkered pattern. So I did that here. Then over here, a few of you might recognize this, but this is one of the versions of my skin. So if I just take my helmet off, you can see they animate through a few different skins. Uh, one of them has blue eyes and that's the one that I decided to build here. I probably will build the rest of them as well at some point, but the one with the blue eyes is my favorite. So when somebody said build your skin, uh, I thought I'd do the one with blue eyes. And then on the map, you can see how it's looking at the moment. So I always forget how many it is, but I think there's like 256 different spaces here overall. So each person will get an 8x8 area to build in. And it's going to be 256 overall. And I think it's going to look really nice by the time it's done. So this is how many I've done so far. There's still 250 to go, if that's the case. And while I'm here, if any of you lot want me to build one of your little pixel art things, it has to fit in an 8x8 area. But you can just head over to TikTok and comment on one of my most recent videos. Just comment what you want me to build. I try to pick like unique ones like, as much as I can. So the more unique you are with it, the more chance I've got of building yours. Okay, so the next build is just to the side of the farming district. Right over here, I've got the raid farm. And I actually think this thing got broken in the 1.17 update. I can see right here. Um, I don't think the Ravagers can fall down the hole anymore. It's a 2x2 two two hole. I think they might have changed it so they can only fall down like a 3x3 three three hole or something like that. So I don't really know what to do about this. And for some reason there's some leaves missing over here. I really don't know what's going on. But I think I might have to tear all this thing down and then rebuild it. So it's kind of a pain but just because of that I don't want to really show too much about this project. And I did get quite a lot of use out of this. I got a lot of emeralds and stuff. And then I uh, used a lot of those emeralds to start trading with the villagers. I think over here I've just got loads of random junk. Like some of these books are probably quite useful. I should probably go through these and take the books out at some point. But unless I can find a way to fix this thing, I probably will be tearing it down. And then I'll have to build another one. Like I said, it was very easy to build this. Like I built it with all of the beginner tools like iron and stuff. No elytra or anything like that. The hardest part was getting this villager in here. You can see that there's a bed there and there's a villager on top of that. But luckily there's a village right there. So that was the hardest part. The rest of it was very easy. And you might have already seen this, but I've got the mob farm over there. So the farming district is right there. The base is in that direction. The uh, raid farm is here. And then just a little bit further on, I've got the hostile mob farm. I think this is probably the biggest project I've done so far. It gets a lot of mob drops. So I'll just stand in the middle. I've got the AFK spot right there where the torch is. And then all the mobs will spawn and you can see them falling down. I think my render distance or my simulation distance is a little bit low at the moment. So I think they're despawning. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty simple farm design. I've just got all these platforms with trapdoors on the side. So the hostile mobs think it's a full block, so they'll walk straight off the edge. And then the minecart hoppers will pick up all the items down below. And even though this is a basic design, I wouldn't recommend building it. Just because it's quite expensive, I think there's like cheaper farm designs out there. I used a lot of trapdoors on the side. When I built this the first time on my old world, I could use buttons. But for some reason, Mojang changed the game and mobs don't see buttons as full blocks anymore. So yeah, this is quite a big project that I worked on. I get a lot of gunpowder from this for all the TNT for like netherite mining and stuff. It's one of my favourite projects that I've worked on, but I just never finished it. So I'm definitely going to have to come back at some point and then do the storage room around here. So I don't really have too many more farms to show, but there is another one. So you can see the raid farm over there, which means the base is in that direction. So if I fly north from where my mob farm is, I'm just going to jump off here. This is to the north. And if I fly for long enough, I will come to an ocean. It's not too far away, I don't think. Probably like a thousand blocks or so. So you can see there's a village that I think that's actually an abandoned village. Oh, there's definitely an abandoned village around here anyway. So I think if you just fly a little bit further off the shore, you can see it right here. So this is a guardian farm that I've built. You can see it's not very impressive at the moment. Um, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why these aren't dead. But yeah, we'll just turn this on and kill the rest of them. 
So the reason I never really finish this project is because I've got some future ideas but they're going to take a long time. So I want to get some iron farms around this place. So the AFK spot is going to be just down here where the trident killer is. So about right here. And what I want to do is have some iron farms in each of the corners. So as far away as possible but so they're still in simulation distance. And that way the iron farms will interact with each other and like break each other. Like if you have two iron farms that are too close, they kind of like mess up and break. So if I do it this way where they're really far away but still in render distance, or simulation distance even, all the iron farms will work at the same time. So that is the plan, but I need to get four iron farms at least. I actually want to get eight of them if I can, but I think if I'm going to do that I need to remove a lot of this water. So even though there's still a long way to go with this project, the guardian farm is actually finished. I just don't have a storage room or anything like that. But I come over here and use this quite a lot, mostly just for the sea lanterns. And I think when this thing's done with all the iron farms in place, then the big storage room and stuff, this is probably going to be one of my favourite projects on the entire world. Okay, I'm back over at the base, and I really don't have too much more to show on this world. But there is a couple more things. So first of all, I'm going to head into the nether. I don't really have too much of a nether hub. I'll just go through here and I'll show you what I've got going on. So at the moment, this is my nether hub. Uh, yeah, they're really not too impressive. So my nether portal's there and then I just come down here. Uh, that's where the original nether portal was. But if I just come all the way down this ladder, all the way to the bottom, this is my netherite mine right down here. So I've got loads of chests, most of these are just full of netherrack from all this mining. And I've got some TNT over on this side. So you can see all of my netherite mining, uh, I did a lot of this in one episode, but I've spent quite a lot of hours doing all of this. It all goes like 400 blocks in that direction, each of these little tunnels. Uh, it took a long, long time. I'm not going to show all of it, but I just thought I'd show this project just because I have spent a lot of my time on this world mining for netherite. So that is actually everything that I wanted to show on this world. Like I said, it may not be as much progress as some other people would make, but I'm quite happy with the amount of progress that I have made. So I was thinking maybe I could do a world tour after 50 episodes as well. And then after that, I'll probably do one every 50 episodes. So 100 and then 150 and then 200. If this series even goes on for that long. I don't really know how long this series is going to last. Maybe the world might get corrupted again, but I always make backups now, so hopefully that won't be a problem. But anyway, now I've shown everything, it is the end of the episode, so I hope everyone enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.